Welcome to the assessment brief for the e-marketing technology analysis, also frequently referred to as the ETA. This particular set of support materials are available on the Wattle site again. They are located in the little pop-up drop-down breakout folder on the Wattle site and it is a PowerPoint file and a Word document. The Word document has a lot of additional nuance and detail compared to this video and the PowerPoint file. So please make use of both assets in your preparation for this assessment task. So the intention, purpose and game plan with the ETA is by the first third of the semester, by week four, thereabouts, you will put forward a proposal and the proposal is going to tell me about a project that you're going to run, you're going to operate for the rest of the semester. So somewhere between eight to 10 weeks, depending on how you score it, if you use a semester break, how far into the exam period you run. The document's going to be about 2000 words. It's worth about 20%. And it's going to be done through a Turnitin submission. And the thing about this particular task is it's going to play three specific roles. The first thing it's going to do is it is going to give me an opportunity to provide you with feedback about the direction that you're going to take for your self-service internship this semester. You will be using an app or a website or a social media service and you will be using it with intention to attain or at least pursue a set of goals. So this is a plan, planning and timeline process. It's about creating a task for yourself, what it is you're going to do, how it is you're going to do it and the steps along the way that you think you need to achieve to pursue that end goal. Now I'm being careful with my language here. I talk about the pursuit of the end goal, I talk about trying to attain a goal or steps towards a goal, because in the companion document, the companion assessment task to this, we're not measuring whether you succeed, we're measuring what you learnt from trying to pursue that particular outcome. So this means that if you set yourself a goal of an input goal, say post 100 pieces of media, you set yourself an output goal of get to number one on a chart. If you don't attain those two outcomes, you can still get a good final assessment task because you can explain to me what happened, why you didn't necessarily reach your goal you had in mind. Equally, however, should you be subject to phenomenal viral success, you will be assessing what lessons you've learnt, not the fact that congratulations by sheer fate of the internet, your cat video got featured on a popular meme site and you got millions of views but you can't explain how or why or replicate it. So the key here is you're setting up a plan that you will assess your own performance against that plan. It's a two-part event separated by eight to ten weeks with a bunch of work in between. This specific document, the ETA, the technology analysis, it is across three pieces. A technology overview, your plan, and your goals that inform the decision around the plan. Now, one of the things that this assessment task will require you to do is make a decision and stick to that decision. So when you elect, I'm going to use this social media platform, and you pick your primary platform, the aim is to get you then to make a series of decisions based on the consequence of I have selected platform A, 
I will now make my decisions for platform A. I'm not prohibiting you from doing anything you want on the internet. I'm just telling you that you only, for this assessment task, get one object, one application, and you're to focus your game plan around the use of that particular approach. Don't try and make it more complicated than it needs to be because it's it does a pretty good job of being complicated enough on its own. Now, the other thing I'll point out is that along the way, along the semester, we are going to support you in the pursuit of your goals. We're going to run different workshops and exercises. And the ETA can feed into the ePortfolio, your experience of running your project, your experience of your self-service internship and your life integrated learning opportunities feed quite nicely down to the ePortfolio. Also, the decisions you make here in the technology analysis impact your performance review. So decisions have consequences and that's a feature that we're going to work with across the semester. Now in terms of the what you need to do, the first section. What you are being asked to do here is to explain what you're going to use for the semester to me and explain it to me in marketing language. This is where you're going to be using citations and references, calls to theory and drawing on your other marketing studies and also drawing on the knowledge that exists through Google Scholar, the journals, the databases, the library and the fact that the internet exists and we've been writing information and instruction manuals about how to do stuff for ages. The core of this section and what makes the points and the money is you look at the service, you explain what it is, so you're thinking about its value offer, its product offer, what you can do with it, so you're thinking in terms now of co-creation, as a user I could do X, I could do Y, I could do K. Any costs that you're going to incur here in terms of the aspect of price, remembering that just because it's free doesn't mean it uh, doesn't cost something. So time, effort, energy, emotion, financial, if you decide that you want to be a lifestyle blogger and you're going to do a whole bunch of product reviews, I hope you've got the budget to buy the products. But that's also what the point of this sort of operation is, is to get you to think some of those things through. Now, where people have uh, the occasional challenge here, and I want to really emphasize here is, you're telling me about the product, then you're telling me about the sort of target market you think the product is aimed towards. So if you were to do Fortnite and that was going to be your uh, thing you use for the semester, Fortnite, we sort of, when we mention it, you can think about the sort of audience you think Fortnite's targeting, who it is that you think is going to be the core product offer there compared to say Spotify or LinkedIn or YouTube or Google Hangouts or ICQ or Instagram, each of these particular products has an audience that they are targeting. They're broadly, some of them because of the size of them now are targeting many audiences. But there is an audience that you can identify for the particular product. What we're really keen on here is the audience market fit. So this is an important aspect of you training as a marketer going, here's a service, this is what you can do with it, this is the audience that it's targeting for, this is how well in alignment or not in alignment you are with one of those audiences. Case in point, the audience profile for TikTok does not match my psychographic nor my demographic needs. So I'm a poor fit for that platform. If I was to use it, I'd then have to explain why putting me on there would be, you know, how as a consumer I would fit this audience. And I can be a counter audience, an anti audience. But for the most part, make your life easier. Be, try and find a platform that suits who you are, what you are, what you like. 
but be able to describe it in marketing language. So we've got the shopping list of possible skills, theories, and ideas you could bring into play. Make use of, this is not a prescriptive, it's an inspiration list. You don't have to use everything on there, but you can't come back to me at the end and say, oh, didn't really know what, to, what theories to think about in part one, when you've got an absolute shop, you know, shopping list of fundamental marketing theories in column two there. So use it as a springboard, use it as an inspiration, use it as a starting point. Now, the second part of the paper is more personal. Uh, so I'm not as fussed about the pursuit of references here, but you could, you still could if you fancied it. There's a way to do it. Because what we want here is that this is your overarching goal, strategy. This is the heart of the project. And I want it to be, rather than being an end state of, oh, I'm, I'm just doing this project to get a grade. Uh, you're going to hate the project, you're going to have a bad semester if you do it that way. If you do this as a, okay, I want to use this platform to achieve a personal goal. For example, you could look at LinkedIn and go, I want to use this semester to build a personal portfolio, a personal brand reputation on LinkedIn with the intent of drawing the eye of potential recruiters. That gives you a goal. That gives you a something to work towards. Now you can, and the framing, the language that I want you to think about is the, as a result of these weeks of activity, I will achieve. Here's what, and the goals are achievement oriented. They are what it is in terms of a state change. You want to go from where you are at the start of the semester to where you could be at the end of the semester. And I've got a few suggested possible ways you could do things. Um, you could create, you can be a creator of content. You can be a curator of content. And you can be a consumer of content. So there is a, an additional document available explaining a lot more around the uh, possible ways, possible platforms you could use and things you could do with the platform. But what I'm looking for here, and what you're going to score the points on, is I pick this document up, I read this section, I know the why. What's it going to drive you for the semester? Now, part three is taking parts one, part two, combining them together and extracting out a game plan. Now, there's that old marketing saying, which is more important, plan to the planning process. And always my answer is yes. This is the plan. But to get to this plan, you're going to do a planning process. And that planning process is going to help you drive your semester. What I want to see in part three, which is roughly 500 words plus an image. On the word side, I want to see you convert part two's lofty goals into part three's smart framework oriented outcomes. So if you're going to chase, I'm going to keep using the LinkedIn case study, and you're free to use this if you want to. It's not compulsory, but it's not excluded. If you want to chase your goal of, I want to improve my profile on LinkedIn, then we could give you a set of tasks that you could do, and you could work out a set of tasks that you want to achieve, like raising your profile, posting commentary, creating articles. You could do a content, curate, content creation. You could do a content curation where you went and found important things and you know, relevant things about your industry and posted them up for you for people to comment and discuss. Those are two separate goals and you can then create stuff towards the pursuit of attaining those. The other aspect that we've gotten here is that the goals need a milestone and a waypoint. A milestone is an indicator that you are on the way to achieving your outcome, and a waypoint is a trigger event. Now, date-based waypoints are particularly good, but you can also use uh, any trigger event that says, 
I'm going to check in to see if I'm on track, behind tr schedule, or ahead of schedule to reach my goals. The game plan is also, how am I going to get to my goal? If my goal is 100 post pieces of content, how am I going to create that content? If my intent is to post 100 times, where am I going to get my 100 pieces of content from? So this is about getting into some of the specifics. What I also want to see is I want to see a visualization. I want you to create, both for the assessment task, but also for yourself, a visualization that is from the go time, from the start of this project, this document in particular, through to past, just a little bit past the ePortfolio, either on the ePortfolio or just beyond the ePortfolio, so that you're thinking about this in terms of what can I achieve by when, what can I achieve through this semester, and I, it can be a Gantt chart, it can be a calendar, it can be a roadmap, it can be a visualization. It's got to be visual. I've got to be able to look at your document and go, there it is, you've mapped out, you've thought about what's between you and the end of this task, and you've visualized it, you've brought it into a visual format. So to give you a quick example, uh, in terms of, say, chasing the LinkedIn, my goal is to raise my profile on LinkedIn. My game plan to do this is I'm going to create original content, uh, both through curation, I'm going to find links to important stories and pass comment on them, but also through creation, I'm going to talk about my own original content. I want to post 25 times before the November, before the end of November, or mid-November, which is when the subject wraps up. To do that, I'm going to start off in week six with three pieces of content. I'm then going to use the semester break to do 10, create 10 pieces of content, so that's five per week, to get myself a buffer, get ahead of schedule. I'll spend two of those posts per week, so I'll create five posts two, I'll get a nice little buffer of six uh, additional posts that I can then start using coming into the second half. And then I'll set myself a nice routine cycle starting from second half of the semester, on a Tuesday, on a Thursday, content, content. And to make certain I'm getting there, I will have a countdown of 25, and every time I post something, I'll just knock down that countdown timer until I get closer to zero. And to visualize it, I'm gonna give myself a map. This is where, at the bottom, the number of posts, 0, 10, 20, 25, that's, if at week 10, I'm looking at this going, oh, I'm at eight posts, I know I'm behind. But I should have picked that up at week seven when I went and said, have I reached my 10 posts yet? No, I haven't, got to pick it up. So the waypoints here are the numerical candidates and where I should be at. So I should be at 10 posts on week seven, I uh, should be at 20 posts on week 11, so that gives me a very clear scorecard that I can go and count how many things have I posted at the date of week 8, plus minus my 10, am I on track, am I ahead of schedule, am I posting more than I intended, am I posting less than I intended, and I can review that. Same again for when I hit down the far end of the process, we be looking at week 11 guy, how close am I to 20? Am I in front or am I behind? And that will show whether I'm on track to reaching my end point, my end game. All right, so a couple of quick bits of advice. Uh, where people have run into challenges before is trying to do too much and setting themselves an unreasonable task, going out and saying, well, I'll create an original Netflix series. Uh, no, no, you won't. Um, I will bounce. For the most part, when you present to me a project, I'm gonna look at it uh, and trust your judgment on what you can do. If I think it's outside scale, I will bounce it back to you and I will give you a resubmission opportunity. Your second piece of advice is once you come up with what it is you want as your state change at the end, break it down, chunk it out, modularize it, put it to a week by week 
schedule and see whether that's going to fit around the rest of your semester. It's one of the other things is in uh, a bonus level to think about is when you are timetabling out your project, timetable in all of the other tasks, challenges and obstacles in the way, including birthday parties of significant others, including sporting events of note that you want to attend, watch or otherwise be involved in. Put in the things in your own scheduling, look at and say, well, what could stand between me and achieving my goal? With that in mind, should I tune back my goals? And I would rather you went out and did something well um, that you might feel was less ambitious than you went out and did something highly ambitious, but you didn't feel well at the end of it. You didn't feel that you... It's better to achieve and learn from what you've achieved than to have a to-do list with intent, but nothing ticked off. Last thing is, as you are doing this project, when you write the ETA, you're going to create something that's going to guide your performance for the rest of the semester. So it's going to give you the opportunity to use the portfolio for reflection on how you're progressing your own tasks and your own uh, project. It's going to give you the opportunity to experiment, test drive and try things out. And this is why a lot of what we're doing in the course is based on iterative build process of try, learn, adapt, decide, do I want to integrate this and continue or does it not fit and therefore I should just set it aside and come back to it on a different project later. So overall, if there are any questions, if you want to reach out, uh, I can be reached across the social medias on the at Stephen Dan. The email gets to me directly and the consultation time bookings are for if you need a live face-to-face. -face. The ETA is the setup. The ECA is worth putting the yards into to give yourself a clear set of this is what I want to do with my semester. It's also a big opportunity for you to embrace co-creation to say I want to achieve a goal from my subject and I'm going to act for myself for my own gain in the pursuit of this goal whilst having access to the support that is the rest of the, the cohort, myself as the lecturer, and our whole team here. So give yourself something you want to chase, knowing that you've got a backup plan, you've got allies, you've got friends, and you've got support to go off and try and pursue it.